Welcome everybody back to my YouTube channel. If you like this video, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe. Today we are going to be looking at some Life Sciences Paper 1 uh, final essay questions. This particular essay question came from our 2018 paper and essentially I'm going to pack, unpack this um, essay question for you. I'm going to show you how best to answer it and how to make sure that you get full marks uh, for this section. I know that this section often gives a lot of people stress. Um, and so what I'm going to do is if you'd like to pause the video now so that you can go through this question quickly and see if you can jot down some of your own answers to see whether or not you would have been on track. And then we're going to go through the question and then through the memo. And at the end of the video, I will be posting the memo to uh, this question so that you can compare what you wrote down. All right, let's get into it. So the question says, both the nervous and endocrine systems are involved when a person is in a dangerous situation. So the first thing that should be coming to your mind here is dangerous, as in what do these two systems do to improve your chances of surviving? And what do these two systems do to make sure that the body responds correctly? So the question says, describe the path of an impulse in a reflex arc during a reflex action. Also, describe the role of different glands of the endocrine system in providing the body with extra energy during a dangerous situation. Now, I will say that this is actually quite a tricky essay. It's definitely not one of the easier ones that have been given before, and this is great practice. So let's just quickly unpack what we're going to be answering here. Now, let's not forget that the word describe, and I will say this all the time, it involves the uh, how, the why, the when, and the where all of these things are happening. So when you answer these kinds of questions, and for example, you are now describing the impulse in a reflex arc, you need to make sure that you tell us how it's happening, why it's happening, when it's happening, and where this reflex arc is happening. And so that's going to be your first paragraph of this particular question. Now, roughly, I would say that out of the 17 possible content marks, this is probably going to be, the first um, paragraph, is probably going to be around, I would say, 8 to 9 marks worth of information that you need to provide. And just to be on the safer side, you always want to give just a little bit more information, making sure you use your proper terminology um, so that you can get your full marks. So how do we go about even answering a reflex arc and a reflex action? Well, remember when they're speaking about a reflex action, they are focusing in on the following few things. They essentially want you to describe how that reflex arc is going from the stimulus and how it then makes its journey to the spinal cord and then from the spinal cord, how exactly do the effectors carry out their job. And just in these three points, in these three bullet points, you should be able to write two to three sentences on each of these. In the way that you are speaking about how the stimulus is received, who is doing the receiving in terms of the stimulus, so what tissue is doing that and where. In terms of the spinal cord, we're talking about the different parts of the spinal cord, the neurons, the sensory neurons going in, the interneurons inside the spinal cord, which would be probably another mark going into that as well. And then, not to forget, let's remember that we are doing how, why, when, and where, it's important to describe what's happening in the spinal cord in terms of where are we going in on the spinal cord and where are we leaving. In other words, we want to talk about the dorsal root and the ventral root of the spinal cord. 
And then we want to go into the effectors in terms of motor neurons and how the um, decision is conducted as an impulse down a motor neuron to the effector, which in this instance could be a muscle or a gland. So that's about eight or nine marks worth um, that you would need to give. But I'm going to show you the memo at the end so you can see exactly how they've allocated the marks. Now the second part of this question is quite tricky. It's quite a tricky one. It's essentially asking us to describe the different glands roles of the endocrine system and how they would provide extra energy during a dangerous situation. Now I'm hoping the very first gland that comes into everybody's mind is the adrenal gland. Um, because if you remember... The adrenal gland is closely associated with making adrenaline, right? So it makes you have your fly, uh, fight or flight response. Now the other glands are maybe a little bit trickier because you really have to think about if I want to move quicker, what are some of the things associated with movement? Well, I'm hoping that we think muscle. Now, if my muscles move more, I'm going to have to give them nutrients. And so that means that I need to focus in on a gland that is responsible for providing my muscles with nutrients. Now your muscles need glucose. And the specific gland that I'm thinking of is the pancreas gland as it provides glucose um, either in the form of stored glycogen in the muscles or in the form... Um, of glucose itself, um, depending on whether or not you're storing it or you are using it. Now, the final gland that I want to uh, quickly speak about is going to be quite tricky. There are There's a two-part gland, and I think that this makes the essay quite difficult, because if this is the one that we might forget... And that has to do with a gland that is responsible for keeping your body running at its um, highest possible rate and keeping the body running at its most optimum. And so I'm hoping that we start to think, okay, what gland is responsible for the overall running of the body, the overall um, instruction, and that would be the pituitary gland. Now, the pituitary gland is responsible for many different hormones, but in particular, if we think about hormones that are responsible for um, are responsible for keeping the body running, in other words, keeping the metabolism going, we need to think about the thyroid stimulating hormone. Now, the fourth gland is linked to this thyroid stimulating hormone and that is going to be the thyroid gland. So in total you should actually speak about four glands, the adrenal, the pancreas, the pituitary and the thyroid and each one you are going to have to discuss the hormones that they release and the effects that those hormones have on the body, in particular in a dangerous situation, how would these hormones assist us in dealing with that dangerous situation? So the adrenaline, what does it do? What does the pancreas do? What does the pituitary gland in terms of metabolism help us do? And linked to that, the thyroid, how does that assist us? And so collectively that will give you your 17 marks. Now, if we go over to the memo, you can have a look through it now and see how they've allocated their marks. I'm just going to quickly run through the memo so that we can see the important parts to it. So if we look at have, we have a look at the reflex arc, it's always the same structure of the answer. There's always the stimulus, the receptor, the receptor has a corrective measure, the corrective measure is sent to the effector and the effector carries it out. Now, um, you are asked to give any eight of the following. If you give more than eight, they can't mark the rest of those. In other words, you've maxed out. And so just like I said to you, it's roughly eight or nine things that you would need to be able to give. So let's have a quick look at the answer. 
So as I said, you need to acknowledge that a stimulus will be received. It will be converted to an impulse. It will be transmitted to a sensory neuron through the dorsal root end of the spinal nerve to the spinal cord where the impulse is transferred via an interneuron to a motor neuron which is carried via the ventral root to an effector muscle or gland, doesn't matter which one you put there. Uh, I would go with effector simply because it's just a nice broad term. And the impulse is transferred from one neuron to the next via a synapse. Now, you can give any eight of these. You don't have to give all of them. And likewise, for the second part, the more challenging part of the essay, and what I would suggest is write these as separate paragraphs. I wouldn't write them as one big paragraph. Um, and so let's look at adrenaline. So the role of the endocrine system in providing energy. So more adrenaline is secreted. It's important to say more. Please don't just say adrenaline is secreted because adrenaline is always being secreted in the human body. You need to actually stipulate that there is more being secreted. And these come from the adrenal glands. Yet again, you need to tell me where it came from. Remember, we're describing how, when, where, and when. This then increases the blood glucose level or it increases the heart rate, it increases the breathing rate, it dilates your blood vessels. Essentially, you could have written any one of those and gotten the mark. The next thing you need to acknowledge is the sugars and the pancreas. So if we need to move our muscles more, we need to take um, glucagon, which is the hormone, which is secreted from the pancreas or the islets of Langerhans, and it increases your blood glucose level because more movement requires more glucose to the muscles. The next component is the thyroid-stimulating hormone, which is secreted by the pituitary gland. This increases thyroxine uh, production, and more thyroxine is secreted by the thyroid gland, which ultimately increases the metabolic rate. Now, this last two uh, little sub paragraphs essentially they lead into one another so you could actually just write them as one whole paragraph if you wanted to but it's really it's this is quite a difficult paragraph to get right um you need to be very well versed in what do each of your hormones do and why they do it? And I think you need to spend some time on that too. Please have a look at any of my other videos that are in um, linked to this, particularly my negative feedback videos, my endocrine videos, and that will really give you a nice clear understanding of how to approach this. And last but not least, never forget to look at your synthesis mark. Is everything relevant? Is there a logical sequence? And is everything comprehensive in other words have you given enough detail and that should get you your 20 out of 20 in your essay but other than that if you like this video please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe and i will see you next time bye